In college, my gay best friend and I joked that if we hadn't found love by 40, we'd have a baby with each other. 20 years later, I'm pulling the ripcord. From deciding on solo motherhood to choosing IVF, I'm Meredith, and this is The Backup Plan. Hey there, everybody. If you are new, welcome. If you've been around the block, guess what? This is the week I start my medication. Like, I can't believe it. Like, if you've been listening, you know that I've gone from not wanting to do IVF at all to like planning it and then getting waylaid because I had to get surgery on my foot and I was recovering from that. And now that's pretty much recovered. And, and I start my pills this week, which is just, it's crazy. I go into the doctor on Thursday. We'll do the ultrasound. They'll tell me if I've ovulated or not and whether or not I should start taking the medication. I should have ovulated. That shouldn't be like an issue. So It's just crazy. It's finally here. Now, this week is a very special episode because my dear friend, Ariana Maddox, one of my very, very closest people in my whole entire world is joining. She froze her eggs back during COVID, which I can't believe was nearly four years ago now. Time has like stood still and sped up at the same time. It's it's crazy. But I remember when she did it, I didn't really think too highly about egg freezing, to be honest. I thought it was kind of a racket. I'm not saying that I wish I froze my eggs because A, I didn't have the finances to do it back then. And B, I was just in a totally different headspace. But I do wonder like where I was at health-wise at that point. My levels and everything are good. If you go back and listen a couple episodes, you'll hear when I first started going to Kind Body, you know, and I got checked out, they said everything looks good for where I'm at right now. But Now I'm like, what was it like all along? Like, shouldn't we as women know that? But who am I to make judgments about American healthcare? Anyway, Ariana and I went to college together. We met 20 years ago and we've been very close. After college, I went down to Orlando. She went up to New York. And then about the same time within months of each other, we both moved to L.A., I remember her telling me, oh, I'm going to be on this show, Vanderpump Rules. And I was like, I don't know what that is. I don't have cable. And it's wild how much the show has been a part of my life without me being on the show, which is totally fine. Right. I mean, I don't need to be on the show. <laughs> I am too boring. I actually, fun story. I screen tested for Vanderpump Rules and I was like, this isn't going to go well. And um, it didn't. Uh, <laughs> it's like, I want to say season four or five. And I can't help but be who I am. And so they were asking me questions about Kristen. And this was at the height of Kristen and Ariana not getting along. And at that time, I was just like, it seems like she needs therapy. And they were like, right. But we're like, what do you think about her? And I was like, I hope she starts therapy. And then they were like, they were trying to get me to say like bad things about her, bad things about Ariana. I like everybody. I, you know, I don't really want to talk to Kristen, but now Kristen has become a friend of mine too. And so it's all, it's weird how everything works out. And it's really weird how the last year has turned out, um, especially. I did not think a year ago that I would be in New York seeing her in a starring role on Broadway. And she's just really fantastic. And her time in New York is coming to an end. Unfortunately, I mean, fortunately and unfortunately, I'm excited to have her back. But I know that she's been living her dream out there. So I just I couldn't be happier for her. And my friendship with her has taught me so much about what it means to like truly appreciate something for somebody else. There have been so many things that have come her way that like I thought my knee jerk reaction was going to be jealousy and I was surprised to find that my knee-jerk reaction was just like nothing but joy. Um, and I surprised myself. Anyway, I'm really glad for you guys to hear this conversation that we have because in ways we are so extremely alike and in some ways we are just completely different. Like my whole journey, granted, I'm going this journey to have a child and she went through a similar journey or half of the journey to have her eggs frozen. But even if I was just getting my eggs frozen for me, there are so many like mental hurdles that I know I need to jump through to to be at peace with my decision. Whereas for her, it was just like so clinical. So you'll hear me a couple of times be like, well, what was the moment that made you decide? And she was like, eh, I decided to do it. It seemed like a smart thing to do. 
And I was like, right. But like, what was your come to Jesus moment? She's like, I didn't have one. (laughs) And I have a tendency. I mean, I think we all kind of have a tendency to think that like the way that we think about things is the way that everybody thinks about things. And so I like to stop, pause, and really take a temperature of the room. And it helps me to, I mean, it helps me make my decisions a little bit easier because I know it's not like the life or death situation (laughs) I've made it out to be in my head. And when we were talking about relationships and family building and stuff like that, it reminded me we we touch a little bit on the emotional labor that women deal with when they're in relationships. And I'm going to link to an article below or in the show notes that I read in Harper's Bazaar back in 2017 by an author named Gemma Hartley, I believe. I'll link her below as well. When I read this article in 2017, it really... I mean, if I'm honest, I think that was really the beginning of me starting to think about doing this on my own. And I remember having a conversation with a friend who we were talking about having kids and this friend is married. And I said, well, you're gonna have kids before me. And she goes, I mean, that's not guaranteed. And I mean, if anybody could have kids on their own and be successful at it, it would be you. And I think those were two kind of catalyst moments for me that changed my thinking and set me on the path that I'm on right now. So Anyway, enjoy the conversation. Please follow Backup Plan Pod on social media. Subscribe, rate, review, like, all of the things. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being here. And one quick note, towards the end of the episode, there's kind of like a little bit of a hiccup. We just got embroiled in such fascinating conversation that Ariana's phone overheated and turned off. But, you know, we came back to wrap it up. So you have that. Anything that we talk about in the episode, I'll make sure to link below as well, you know, like links to Amazon or, or whatever. So, and then finally, if you have any questions, you want to reach out, my email address is info at backupplanpod.com, or you can DM on Instagram. That's an easy way to get in touch too. Anyway, thank you for listening and enjoy. Oh my God. Oh my God. We're podcasting again. <laughs> Blast from the past. <laughs> um, hey, I got a question online from a listener of mine that said, how are you and Ariana? <laughs> uh, I'll let you good. answer that. How are we? Good. I'm just so far away. I'm a million miles away. So, well, like 2000 something, but yeah. <laughs> 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 but you're going to be back soon, not to like make you sad or anything. Yeah, soon. In a couple of weeks, I will be back in Los Angeles. Yay. Well, I'm just, I'm just like tickled you've made time for me because you have done what I am about to do. My last meds come in today. So I didn't, like, I knew there were a lot, but like the size of the box was very intimidating. Yeah, the like freezer styrofoam box. Yeah. (laughs) Well, and like, you know, you know me and you know my mom. So they were like, okay, here's how much it's going to cost. And I was like, can I get a deal somewhere else? And so my mom and I both were like checking different sites and stuff like that. And it didn't really end up working out, but Mm. um, I still ended up having to get them all from the same spot, but they ended up Mm -hmm. coming up in different boxes. So I have had multiple boxes of multiple boxes. Oh, yes. (laughs) Yeah. So Yeah, mine was... um... Some prescription delivery company. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what I thought was nice is they give you like a little salted caramel with your delivery. They gave you candy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like fancy candy or like branded candy? Uh, I don't remember what it was, but it was like a little caramel chew. I was like, wow, thanks. Bonus. Bite down Bonus. on this as you're injecting. Oh, God. Yeah. Was it just one little caramel chew? Yeah. With every delivery, they give a caramel chew. It's quite cute. Yeah. Where? Okay. Let's go back in time. You Mm -hmm. froze your eggs in the year of our Lord. 2020. 2020. Because it was during During the pandemic. Yeah. I remember. It was the COVID summer. Yeah. I remember because your birthday's in June and we went out to Ojai and there was like a whole moment of like, let's pause. She Pause to get injected. injected. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, and we all just kind of like waited for a second, like watched it, and we're like, okay. 
cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was quite fun. Um, and not being able to, you know, it was fine, but like not being able to like drink on my birthday and stuff while also in like a lovely, like wine ish country area. Right. But it was lovely anyways. What exactly made you decide to freeze? Like I knew at that time Sheena was freezing her eggs, right? Or was she had eggs. done it once already. Right. And right. she had told me that, um, you know, obviously we were around each other a lot during this process yeah. while she was like injecting and had to get her surgery and all that stuff. And, and you're like, that looks like fun. Yeah. I was like, this sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> No, but she was like, um, if you're even considering it, like you should do it, you know, sooner rather than later, at least get like checked to see like, you know, what your levels are and stuff. And I was like, well, if there is any time to do it, it's probably going to be a time when there's, I had nothing at that time going on because it was normally when we would be filming Vanderpump Rules but we weren't filming because of COVID. So it just seemed like, you know what, if I'm ever going to do something like this now just seems like the right time to do it. So I initially just went for like consultation and to just kind of get levels checked and stuff like that. And they were like, your levels are all really great. Like, honestly, you should just do it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, this, this seems like the right thing to do. And um, I went, I was getting, me and Sheena were going together to get like acupuncture and things like that because they said that that can help just everything um, right. in the system. So we were doing that and that's around the time that she ended up um, getting pregnant. Right. And obviously that was not, a, it was her, she had had a miscarriage mm-hmm. um, and then that's right around the time that she got pregnant with Summer. So yeah. Um, Cause I remember that was while we were in Ohio. That was what she was going through with her miscarriage. Right. Um, but yeah, that was, that was the time, you know, that was, that was like kind of like the bubble of everything that was going on at that time. And so, yeah, it just, everything aligned and, you know, going, getting acupuncture was, was nice. I enjoyed it. I know you don't like it. <laughs> No, I just, I want to go again, just not to that same place I went. Mm. Um, Cause I think it was, I think that was part of it. I just don't think that lady was my vibe. Where did oh, you go yeah. for acupuncture? Um, a place that was recommended by um, SCRC, which is where I did my egg freezing. Okay. Um, and uh, is who Sheena was also seeing. We would, we actually went, uh, I think once or twice uh, together um, and I it's don't like remember the ladies with needles in them. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. Just like, like a couple's massage. Just kidding. <laughs> um, but I don't remember the lady's name, but she was quite sweet and I, I really enjoyed it. Like when you get the needle in your, the third eye area, uh-huh. I'm like, I have like visions. I'm laying there. My like, mom has had visions. I didn't get a third eye needle. <clears throat> you got to get the third eye needle. Third. <laughs> I gotta get it. I gotta get it. I'm gonna try yeah. it again. She was just was not my jam where I went. Well, if you remember where you went, let me know and I'll put it in the show yeah, notes. Yeah, she's in Beverly well. Hills in one of those okay. medical office buildings. Okay. A, a sweet Super older zen. lady. Oh. Yeah, she's great. Like, it took me a while because I was hoping, I mean, you know the whole story because I've told you the at length like what I've been going through and everything but like it took me a really long time to come to like I'm gonna do IVF which requires the egg retrieval and stuff mm-hmm. like that you've obviously had some thoughts about reproduction over the years like did you have like a weird like come to Jesus moment about like this is something I want to do or was it just kind of like Looks like fun. I'll try it too. Um, Yeah, no, I didn't have any sort of moment of like of anything of that sort. Right. Um, My thought behind it is that, you know, these, these eggs are in my body currently. Um, And they may or may not, nothing may or may not happen with them while they're in my body. But if they can be frozen, taken out and frozen, then they have 
at some point some sort of potential for something for any reason. But as they exist in my body, just, you know, one a month, just going bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> they serve they serve no purpose inside of me, really, at this moment. So, so really it was like spring cleaning. Spring, um, spring, <laughs> um, re rearranging, spring, rearranging. storage, unit. Spring storage, storage. Yes. Yeah. There's sometimes there's just stuff you got to get it out of the garage and like into the storage. I feel like, like it's, it's, uh, a, it's better for them to be in storage for me yeah. personally, because, yeah. and I mean, I was shocked at how everyone's different in terms of your body's response to these medications and stuff. And my body's response was very strong. And so there were a lot of, of eggs retrieved. So for me, it's like, that's great. So they can be over there and in for safekeeping and they might be in safekeeping until, you know, I die. I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> but either way, they're there. You know what I'm saying? Do you remember what your results and stuff were? Um, what's the hormone? Um, There's the AMH, which is like the level. Yes. Yes. My AMH was 4.8 or something like yeah. that. It was a 4.6. It was, it was high. Yeah. Do you remember how many follicles you had? I don't remember the follicles. I do remember my last ultrasound appointment. Okay, one thing I have to say, get ready yeah. to give a lot of blood all the time. <laughs> yeah. I've had two already and then like to the point where you're going to be switching, you know, yeah. or like okay, we need to alternate cuz there's a lot yeah. of blood will be taken. Yeah. A lot of um ultrasounds. Yeah. Um, but I do remember my last ultrasound before my appointment, you know, when they're taking little pictures of things, yeah. um, there were a lot of photos being taken of follicles. Right. And then the eggs, the number of eggs that were taken was 26. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's a I lot. Know when, when we first started this, Michael was like, well, I mean... If you don't have enough eggs, you can just borrow one of Ariana's. And I was like, that's. I mean, it's kind of, not how it works, but. Kind of I not mean, how it works. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I just give me the keys to your storage unit. And that's, yes, exactly. Yeah, yes, yeah exactly. I'll pick up some Christmas decorations and also <laughs> just a little Ova. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Okay. So, of like all the. Of all the drugs and stuff that you have to take, what were the reactions that you had? Because I'm nervous about that. There's definitely some hormonal type. I, I'm not sure. For me, I, I'm like a PMDD girl. So mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say that my hormones were going that that far, but mm -hmm. I could definitely feel some hormonal things going on. Right. We know the feeling. I don't know how to describe it, but I feel like we we know the feeling. As ladies. Um, there's definitely one of the shots just physically that kind of burns a little bit mm -hmm. as it's going in. But if mm -hmm. you, I, I got it down. I got the routine down. Yeah. So I can tell you about that as well. Um, the reaction, there was a lot of, um, just like a little bit of uh, inflammation, I would say, like within my uterus area. Um, right. I think because my body was reacting so strongly to the drugs in a way that was positive to like, you know, get this many Myrtle eggs. Myrtle Myrtle over here. Right. Like who knew? Jeez. <laughs> um, <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> but that was something that like after my retrieval surgery, it took a while for my body to kind of like the fluid and everything to kind of calm down because Did you have a lot of bloating and stuff. It was, an, I had a lot of bloating afterwards. Yeah. yeah. And I think that that is from what I've heard or read, it is in direct proportion to how many eggs you have or like 
how many you maybe you got in your surgery or, or how strongly your body reacted to the medications to like boost that right. versus like the recovery. So from what I've heard, and I may be off on this, so anyone can tell me I'm an idiot, but um, <laughs> if you were to say like, oh, I got, you know, three, which is great. But if like, let's say you were to, then you might go back to yeah. normal quicker. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because your body wasn't like maybe freaking out as much. Right, right, right. Yeah, I'm so interested to see what it does for me because my, like when I first went in for my AMH, it was like 1.1 and they were like, that's fine. Like as long as it's above one. Mm -hmm. And then like two weeks later I went in and they were like, it's 0.84. And I was like, whoa, wait, what? (laughs) How does that, I didn't realize it could change like that like fluctuate that quickly. And I was yeah. like, I'm really stressed out. Could that have something to do with it? And they were like, probably not. And I was like, oh. you know, wait, uh, I just they? <laughs> I remember they had like a list of be- foods, behaviors, yeah. things like that, that they said will help with it. I loosely, I mean, look, obviously, you know, I didn't do any drinking. I didn't do any right. Like I, I pretty, I followed most of the things, but there were some things that I was like, that's not going to be possible. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I can't go. They were like, I know they don't love caffeine. Right. And I didn't go crazy on the caffeine, but I was like, I have, I have to have like a yeah. little bit of something yeah. to get me through yeah. the day. Yeah. I have been, they didn't give me a list of things to do, which I kind of wish they had. But then at the same time, I don't, because you know, all the foot shit that I've been going through like yeah. with that surgery and everything, there's only so much that I've had control over. I would really have loved to be moving more and like grooving more and building yeah. some muscle tone and stuff like that. And that it just hasn't been possible. And then like cooking was hard i mean i cooked ahead of time at the surgery but i've been alone for the whole thing so Mm -hmm. um i haven't been able to do as much as i want i've I've been able to cook more for myself in the past couple of months i just have one coffee in the morning and that's fine yeah that's fine fine (laughs) um but uh i'm really interested to see and then follicles i had 12 follicles last they checked Mm. which they were like for 40 if you have between 5 and 10 which I'm not there I mean a couple months away but uh as long as you have like they're like you're good you're good so I don't I don't know I'm nervous I'm nervous about it because I've been thinking about it for so long at this point yeah have you started the injections yet or no? No. So on Thursday, I go to the doctor and they're going to check and make sure I've ovulated. And then I'll start a stradiol, like a, a tablet. Mm. And I take that for two weeks. And then when my period starts, then I'm going to start the injections. So I didn't have a tab, an oral medication. Yeah. It's weird to me how different, I mean, I guess, yeah. I guess it's good that it's different because everybody's different, but right. Um, I guess that's that is good that it's not just like a one size fits all. Like here's yeah. what you do, kind of thing. Yeah, because I yeah I didn't have a tablet at one point about a week and a half before I had an ultrasound, and then they you know took more blood, and then they <laughs> said to stop with one of them. Uh huh. Like I, they were like, okay, stop, take, don't throw away the rest of it. I was like, oh, okay. Okay. So I guess in throughout your time as well, they might yeah. alter what you're taking. Yeah. Well, like they have me, they had um, Zomactin prescribed for me. And that is one that's not normal. Like not everybody takes that, but it's mm-hmm. like a human growth hormone thing. And there is like a shortage of it, like mm. worldwide. Mm. So I went to order it from Walgreens and they were like, we don't have it. And I went to order it from Freedom Fertility and they didn't have it. And so I called CVS and they were like, we checked nationwide and it's not available. And I was like, what the fuck? Am I going to have to drive to Tijuana for this? Yeah. And um, and uh, and I went online. I was like, Mexican pharmacy, Zomactin. And like, there are all these different places that's like, anti-aging, take this thing. And I was like, God damn it. People are using it to... 
Oh, right. Pe- pep up their their <laughs> libido or whatever it is. I don't know. But I finally found it at one of the fertility places. So, okay. But it's not one that people normally take, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, so, I don't know. Yeah. I have to say, so with the injections, I know you know this story. I don't know if, I, you know, I'll tell it. I, I got all my medications, you know, my little styrofoam cooler box and everything. Yeah. And, you know, there's written instructions and then there's links to instructional videos and everything. And, you know, I I had everything laid out and I was just like, okay, uh, I guess I got to do this, you know, like I'm supposed to start today. So, and one of the drugs is in, it looks like a clicky pen. Folistin. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, well, that one, I'll, I'll just do that one first because it's the least, you know, it's not taking something out of a vial and wiping and the this and the that. I was like, this right. one seems the most straightforward. I'll start with that. Well, in the instructional video, it shows basically like, okay, so my camera like this, right? It's yeah. like zoomed in on a lady's tummy and she's like, na, na, na. <laughs> and she just, you know what I mean? And there's just like yeah. a white background and a tummy. Yeah. And her doing it. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Uh, you know, and I've never given myself, I'm not on needle. I don't have like a thing of with needles, but like I've never sh- given myself a shot. And I feel like that yeah. kind of is, that's different. I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of like, yeah. and all of a sudden I was like, this feels, I don't know. Something about this is just feeling really weird. But I was like, this is what it says. Follow the instructions. I don't know. Right. This is what everyone else does, right? You know, every lady that's doing this is doing this. So <laughs> I, 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 gotta, I should just do it, you know? And so I was standing in my kitchen, you know, between the island and the refrigerator on that, like, end. Yeah, yeah. And my ex was standing uh, with me because I was like, I guess I got to what do I do? And he was like, I don't know. I would, do you want, what do we, I don't know. And so I just was like, okay, I got to do it. You know? And I was laughing, you know, like I'm nervous, like, <laughs> like, and I, <laughs> I was like, I guess I got to do it. And so I just kind of like, it was like a one, two, three. Right. Right. And as I felt it go into my belly, I was like, ooh, and I I put my head down like this on the counter because I was just like, whoa, this is like weird. I feel really, really weird. And then I just fainted and collapsed backwards. And of course, the dog, Maya's freaking out. Everyone's freaking out. You know, it's like also like oh, maybe a couple months after Maya was even <laughs> rescued. So she's <laughs> like, what the fuck, probably. <laughs> um, and yeah, so... The lesson that I learned is that I was not not going to be doing any of it standing up from that point <laughs> forward. And I have beef with the instructional videos because I feel as though a lady nonchalantly standing there shooting up her belly with this In is a, a very void. unrealistic representation of... Yeah the do's and not, and not do's of this whole thing. <laughs> the do's and not do's. <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to say that. Don'ts? The don'ts? The don'ts. There the it don'ts. is. The word is don't. <laughs> <laughs> so when when the egg retrieval part came, mm-hmm. how intense was that for you? Um, cause they put you out for it. Yeah. Yeah. They put you out. So yeah, I went to the doctor or, you know, to their office and put out and I'm someone who loves anesthesia. So (laughs) I woke up from an incredible nap (laughs) and went home and ate soup and you hung out with my big bloated belly for a few weeks and how um how like did you have pain coming out of it no maybe a little maybe like slight but not 
not like anything that was really nothing like, worse than you get like during a period. nothing worse than like a period cramp yeah okay okay and not like a bad one either um oh, and i know again everyone's different but that was my experience i didn't really have any pain the pain that i experienced at that point after that was all related to like the fluid in my abdomen and mm -hmm. that sort of stuff um and also feeling like you know I was doing apparently too much in the the couple of like right after because I thought I would be able to just like they said rest but I didn't realize they meant like rest right so I was not doing anything crazy but I was walking up and down the stairs in the house going shopping and going shopping yeah. um yeah normal like low key stuff and then I went back for my follow up and they said that I had a lot of fluid in my abdomen and I needed to basically be on like bed rest. Mm. And that was really tough because yeah. contrary to popular belief, although I do love my bed, I don't want to be relegated to my bed and not be able to like <laughs> exercise. Or I remember my ex's birthday was around this time. Right. And so I couldn't even really like participate in that right. I remember like that was the day that they called me back and told me like you need to go to bed right. and I was like uh, I was like trying to hang up like a birthday streamer thing and I was like and then I and I was very emotional I think because also like I was kind of coming out of like the Hormone like the story. hormonal situation yeah. was kind of like finding its way back to normal and so I remember crying and just being like I'm not allowed to do anything <laughs> that's such a like <laughs> sitcom way to find out with like birthday streamer in hand, <laughs> yeah, literally, <laughs> and then crying. That's yeah, such a nineties like multi. Like, I have to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this season, this season on Vanderpump Rules, um, you had that episode where you and Lala went to like the smoothie place or whatever, and you what were a talking peach. about oh, what a peach. Um, was it next to like a post office or something? Because I rewatched it last night and there was like Americana, like stars and stripes next to it. And I was like, I'm not sure if it's a post, uh, it's on the side, yeah, whatever. The, it's like on the so side of that building. I it guess it's very I like whatever the other you side. were There's sitting 7-Eleven across the street. Whatever yeah. you were sitting in front of, it looked yeah. very like Uncle Sam Americana. I have to like drive by, by that again and figure out yeah. what's next to it. <laughs> Maybe anyway, it's neither, neither here nor there. But you said that like in retrospect, that being in that relationship for as long as you were, like really affected your feelings on having kids more than you thought, which mm -hmm. to me was like... I obviously, like, I'm chronically single, so I haven't ever had a relationship affect <laughs> what I do or don't want to do in my life or what my future is or isn't. But, like, I've had finances affect my choices and I've had career affect my life choices and stuff like that. Like, I, I think, I mean, you know me, like, I have that maternal desire and I have that if a little kid is at a party, like, I don't want to talk to adults, like, I want to go play <laughs> with a little kid. Or the grandmas. There's like, I this place I'm in, I'm not interested in talking to people my own age. <laughs> um, but um, I have put on hold for a long time starting a family because I was like, I don't have the money to do that. So like mm -hmm. that's so I so I understand like circumstances affecting choices that you have, mm -hmm. but I just kind of I don't know. I wanted to talk a little bit more about how that relationship affected like direction that you've had in your life and mm. obviously like that would not have been a good place to have children <laughs> well I think Clearly. I have never witnessed an example of equal partnership that was not yeah. something that my parents had at all my mom was essentially you know not to say that my dad wasn't lovely in many ways, but he was not, you know, picking us up and taking us to school, taking us to practice, making dinner every night, making breakfast every morning, helping us with homework every night. Like that just wasn't 
what he was doing. And I've never really seen, so I've not seen that. And so for me, what it means to be a mom is you do everything. Yeah. Because that's what I've literally what I watched. Um, and had I, oh my God, my phone, had I like, had I been a mom five years ago, as much as everyone says like, no, no, no. I, to me, I'm like, I would do everything. And yeah. To, you know, be in a, um, a partnership where someone maybe wants to go out all the time, even if, I, listen, I don't believe anyone who says like, oh, well, if I, if I had a kid, I wouldn't go out all the time. Yeah, (laughs) I believe you. (laughs) I think we've seen that in some other relationships that we know. Mm Hmm. Yeah. 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 Um. So I don't have like uh, my thing is that I don't really, I don't enjoy. I I enjoy children. I always have. I've been. I mean, I was the oldest of the cousins and everything. And, um, I think they're a delight, but when I think about being pregnant and giving birth, Mm -hmm. I envision dying. (laughs) I envision a a trauma that I will never come back from, Mm -hmm. uh, both physically and mentally. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, for essentially 38 years of my life, then it would be me then doing all these things by myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. After the fact, I, I truly like, (laughs) like, I don't know. I know that many people have children without health problems and childbirth, but a lot of people do have health problems in childbirth. Well, and it's not like our country is like supportive of, recovery either no so i just feel like everything is stacked against moms essentially like in general as a whole and it is uh amazing to me that despite all of those things so many women are like no i'm gonna do it anyway because it's gonna be worth it (laughs) you know yeah and i just feel like i would die on the table that is what i literally (laughs) like do not believe i would survive it I don't know. I don't know what that I, I'm like, obviously I have anxiety issues and I have, you know, all, like <laughs> that's already something we know about me. Like that's been established. <laughs> well, like I ruminate about the worst case scenario. That's yeah. how I, I'm always able to like survive the slightly less than worst case scenario is because I ruminate on the worst. Right. So that is what I, my, my fear for that for sure. But I, I love that you have made that choice though. You know, I think that's so powerful to be like, let me think about this. Cause I think a lot of people are just like, no, I'm going to do it. It's the next step. And yeah. And then later they're like, I wish I hadn't. Or they say something like, you know, really think about it before you have kids. And I'm like, Jesus, <laughs> like I have, I think about it a lot and that's yeah. why I haven't done it yet. But to hear somebody be so like aggressive about it, is always scary. So when people are very aggressive, I think towards women and their choices about their own bodies and their own lives constantly, whether big or small. Yeah. (laughs) Like it's, it's wild. So I think that anything that gives us uh, autonomy, whether that's bodily autonomy or, you know, it's great. I think that yeah. the more we, we are able to achieve that, and obviously I know that it is a huge financial privilege to be able to do something like freeze your eggs, you know, and that's yeah. something I wouldn't have been able to afford for yeah. a long time. I didn't think I didn't think I would have been able to and you know, think God I was in like that place in that year. Mm-hmm. Even though I wasn't I was pretty uncertain about what was to come next during 2020, but at least I knew that that would be something that it was a good time to do it. But yeah. 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 Do you think there was anything else during the pandemic that made you like decide to do it? 
Can I tell you? I mean, so, I mean, I can tell you something related to the timing of it. Yeah. Sheena did it once while we were filming. Mm -hmm. And I know she wanted to do it again. Obviously, she was blessed and, you know, to have this most beautiful daughter now. Yeah. But um, they basically were like, we don't, we don't want to see anybody do that again during the season. So you couldn't. And I thought it was like this incredible thing. And I was shocked that they didn't follow her journey doing it. Right. Um, because I thought it was me. If I was watching the show, I would have been very interested to see that process. Cause I feel like we don't see that. So um, they didn't even want to show her, her doing it. They didn't want to show you doing it, show her doing they it. They didn't they didn't really want to show her doing it. They didn't really I mean, you can watch the show. It's season yeah. eight. You know, she yeah. talks about it, but they don't really show what was going on or what she was going through. They follow the boys to get their jizz tested. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. Whatever. So then uh my thought was, well, we're not filming this summer, so if I wait, if I wait another year, what are they going to tell me that I shouldn't? Because yeah. it's not interesting. Exactly. Right. So Jeez. it felt like the best timing. She is. And I mean, that year, 2020 was so wild and so such a roller coaster and so many like, like, I mean, obviously we all live through it. So we, we remember yeah. Um, but being in that place where I was able to be at home and I was able to take this time and be on bed rest and all these things, like that was something that it was a blessing in, in disguise at the time, because then I was able yeah. to do something like this. When you, were, when you were in it, cause I know this is how I felt because I had just bought my condo right before like I moved that first week that COVID hit mm -hmm. and I remember like being in my condo and just like looking at my nice little condo because you remember the apartment that I had yeah I remember the apartment that you were in mm -hmm. did you have those moments during COVID where you were like oh god thank god I moved like can you imagine being stuck in those old apartments during COVID no no I'm <laughs> so glad that, that that's the where I was that at we that time in them. yeah yeah I mean, we geez. We were out in, on the town most of the time. We weren't really in those places, but. Yeah. <sighs> to go through that in, in my home was a much better feeling than it would have been. <laughs> How glad are you that you only have eggs and not embryos? Very. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have to expound on that. No. <laughs> <laughs> so. Now that you're in a place where like you you're I mean you're in a much better headspace like you're you've got a million things happening and I want nothing more than for you to like have a week off where we can just hang out and do nothing Ooh, but week off yeah someday <laughs> um but how how do you feel like move cuz I feel like there are so many doors that are open for you now and so many different things that you can do and I'm not asking like so what are you gonna do with your eggs now but like <laughs> just as a as a gal like how do you feel <laughs> <laughs> just a lady how do you feel <laughs> um well yeah I mean I've just been working like crazy and Literally what you just said, it would be, it'll be so nice when at some point, yeah, there's like a week off or mm -hmm. just to kind of like, whew, um, and feel just like a yoga retreat or something like when literally like, like that's what I feel like. Yeah. Those silence about retreats silence. where you can't speak. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's. I've looked into those at moments of weakness. I've been like, those are real, right? And then I looked it up and there are, yeah, there are these places that you go and it's like, they take your phone. You have to get up at like 5 a.m. and like cook for the commune. Yeah. Mm, I like, draw the line at 5 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do, I don't do early mornings. <laughs> you need the ritzy one. You need a ritzy. I need one that starts at like 10 a.m. 
But this is one that's kind of, it feels a little culty because like you wake Mm. up at 5 a.m. and you cook for the community and then you all sit in meditation and then you get up and like cook lunch for the community and then you all sit in meditation and then you eat fruit and go to bed at like 8 p.m. I don't know that that's the one. I'd be like, you guys are getting cereal for breakfast. I don't. (laughs) (laughs) This is is too much. (laughs) It's too much. (laughs) Yeah. Do you have any ideas like what your eggs might be used for? Do you think they're just, they're just in the storage unit right now? Or do you have, have you thought about plans for them? Has anybody asked to use them besides Michael? (laughs) (laughs) No, but, um, I do, I, I do because there's a good amount of them. I do feel, I know that. At, over time, they can become less viable. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad that there's a healthy amount. Um, do you know? Do you know the grade of them? I don't. I don't know if they grade the eggs or they can only oh, wait, grade the embryos. Embryos. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think that's how it works. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't have plans and no, no one has, has asked, but you know, (laughs) Michael is Michael's first in line. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I don't know what else to ask because I don't want to ask anything too personal because I don't want to like, obviously spread your fucking business around. Okay. Yes. But before, before I go, I want to give my shot, uh, protocol oh yeah tell me your your routine okay so all the meds get like a plate from the Mm -hmm. pantry from the cabinet and get everything set up and ready to go on the plate okay you know like the syringe this syringe that syringe everything's measured everything's ready to go so once you start you don't have to go back and start doing things you know your your mise en place (laughs) and get everything ready to go on the plate and then ice your tummy for Mm -hmm. I don't know 10 minutes like get whatever spot you're going to be doing the the things in Mm -hmm. get it nice and cold for like 10 minutes with like an ice pack Mm -hmm. and then lay down on your back (laughs) Mm -hmm. And if you can have someone do it for you, by all means, I would say do that. If not, just definitely be laying down. Yeah. Yeah. And make sure you pinch the skin Mm -hmm. on the numb part. Pinch it, pull it up so you have a place to inject it that's not, I don't know, it's numb and it's it's pulled away from you. It doesn't feel as weird. Right. Um, and then when you do that, stay laying down for a second, you know, like, don't like give yourself time to be like, okay, I feel okay. And then are you doing like a soothing musical routine at this point? Or I would say, listen, deep breathing for sure. Like the (laughs) yoga breathing. Yeah. Um, and obviously after you do something like more than once, it becomes a little bit less scary, but the first few times I definitely feel like all of that is necessary. And the icing makes such a huge difference. You know what I got? I got this little thing. It's called a Buzzy Bee. And it's like a tiny vibrator. And it has little frozen wings, like a little ice pack that you put in. And so then you turn it on and you hold it on the spot for a little bit. And the cold and the vibration is supposed to like trick your nerves a little bit. Yes. So. they. I've seen that. Um it's like, um, like if you're getting an injection for something and you tap, your nervous system starts thinking about the tapping. Yeah. 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 So I've got Buzzy to help me. Yeah. But I highly recommend reclining because. It'd be yeah. nice if I had a like full on recliner mm. and like perhaps a little tray. 
that I could like bring. You over need to like the a little liner. a little tray. With all your yeah, accoutrements. Just, you can put it on the coffee table and just a little one. Yeah. Nobody knows what we're talking about unless you do the little tray. Um, I got uh silicone mats, like pads, mm. but they're flexible. Not mm. they're not like this, they're like this. Um <laughs> Because I did want to do my mise en place as well and like yes. prepare it all and on a surface that cats don't walk across oh, every day. Yes, absolutely. You know Important. How it goes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're afraid of motherhood. <laughs> I'm mostly afraid, afraid of, of childhood. Birthing. birthing. Yeah. Yeah. Um and you know what I think is really funny is like because I'm I'm ruminating on this as we're discussing. It's like your vision of motherhood from what you grew up with was like, mom does it all. And that wasn't exactly what I had. I mean, my mom did it all, but my dad was like, on the weekend, he did his like, his breakfast that he cook and, you know, he was contributing in other ways. And then he started working from home and he started doing more cooking and stuff like that. So it was never 50-50 with my parents exactly, but it was like you know, 30, 70, and then a little, mm-hmm. you know, he didn't contribute as much as my mom, but it was a very like boomer idea mm. of marriage, you know, mm-hmm. but still loving and happy and healthy and everything. But it's funny because I see the emotional labor that people go through, women go through, of being in relationships with these dudes who are like, just not giving, you know, they're not mm. doing I what think- they need to do. You know what? I always feel like uh, sometimes I'm like, man, it would be so cool to be a dad. <laughs> I want to be a gay daddy. That's my. That's... I would love being a dad. Seems so fun. And okay. like... <laughs> I've always told people I want to be a gay daddy because it's like it's a different kind of echelon of fatherhood. Mm. Okay, we're gonna be really quick about this as we wrap up. Um, what I love about you, my friend, is that even though motherhood and childbirthing is not necessarily on your vision board, you're very supportive of me and my choices. And thank you. I love you. I love you. Um, and I am so happy for you and so excited that the little one is ever closer on the horizon. <laughs> like, <laughs> Can you imagine what it's going to be like? No, you knowing me as well as you do and Michael as well as you do. Oh my God. It's going to be a blast. It's also like, it's, um, it's going to be perfect for our commune. (laughs) (laughs) The whole, the whole situation is going to be perfect for our commune. Yeah. Yeah. The dream that I will not let go of. Okay, good. Cause I'm. (laughs) still down (laughs) (laughs) i just found out that i can't put up the privacy wall in front of my house that i was like envisioning Mm. and so my anaheim commune compound days uh i think are gonna they're behind behind me Mm -hmm. um they're behind me so we're just gonna have to like look for a new property Mm. i love looking for new properties (laughs) it's so fun You've done a, a lot of it virtually, haven't you? Well, I've done a lot of virtual looking, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm excited for you to get home. Um, mm. I'm excited for you to get into your new space, which I did the home inspection for. And yes, you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was literally like, <laughs> I found crawl spaces that like Kenya didn't know existed. So I was like, have we looked in here? And I'm like pulling doors aside and like getting inside. I'm like, I don't like this opening. Is this okay? So, uh, yeah, it was uh, approved by Meredith. The opening was okay. The inspector said it was okay. Fine. Okay, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, if anybody needs a house. Kenya, the LA home girl. LA home he girl Kenya. is the best. Yeah. All right. Um, before your phone overheats again, I'm going to let you go. You have oh, a show no, tonight. No. I do have a show tonight. And then. And we have a new Velma tonight. Robin Herter is coming in tonight, so it's really exciting. Cute. Can you give any hints about what comes next for you? Mm, No. (laughs) It is a dream job of mine that I have next coming up. I wonder what it could be. 
I love you, baby. TBD, I love you so much. The Backup Plan is created, produced, and hosted by me, Meredith Kate. Julian Hagens is my co-producer. You can find us on social media at Backup Plan Pod. The best place to get updates is to sign up for our newsletter at BackupPlanPod.com, where we also post all episodes, show notes, and transcripts. Thank you for listening.